In today's video, we're looking at the different biological molecules or nutrients that you need for a healthy, balanced diet. So we'll cover carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, vitamins, mineral ions, fiber, and water. And in each case, we'll explain which foods you can get them from and why you need them. Just before we start though, I want to point out that foods normally have a mix of different nutrients in them, not just one. For example, 100 grams of wholemeal bread, which contains about 250 calories, so one eighth of your daily energy requirements, contains about 41 grams of carbohydrates, 13 grams of protein, and three grams of fat, as well as lots of fiber, a couple of vitamins, and a few mineral ions. So even though in this video we'll say which foods are a good source of each nutrient, remember that there's a lot of overlap and almost all foods contain a mix. Let's start off with carbohydrates, lipids and proteins, as these are the main nutrient groups that make up the large majority of our diet. Carbohydrates are found most in starchy foods, like bread, pasta and potatoes as well as in fruits and vegetables. And the main reason we need carbohydrates is as an energy source. So they provide us with most of the energy that we need to carry out chemical reactions and move around. Next, we have lipids, which is kind of a confusing term because in everyday life, we just refer to them as fats. But actually, lipids refers to both fats and oils, with fats being lipids that are solid at room temperature, and oils being lipids that are liquid at room temperature. For example, olive oil would be considered an oil rather than a fat because it's a liquid at room temperature. But you could also call it a lipid because all fats and oils count as lipids. You find lipids in loads of foods, but particularly in oily fish, nuts and seeds, dairy products, and avocados. Their main role is to provide energy, just like carbohydrates, but often they act as longer term stores of energy, because we can store lots of fat for use later. They also do lots of other useful things though, like keep us warm by insulating us and protecting our organs. Finally, proteins are also found in a range of foods, but particularly in nuts and seeds, meat and fish, and also legumes meaning things like lentils and beans. You can think of proteins as building blocks. So we need them to grow and to repair damaged tissue. They can also be used for energy, but only really in emergencies if we don't have enough carbohydrates or lipids. Next, we have vitamins and mineral ions, which are both kind of similar in that there are lots of different types of each and we only need them in very small amounts. The key difference though, is that vitamins are organic molecules, meaning that they're made by living organisms, whereas minerals are inorganic and generally much simpler molecules. If we start with vitamins, vitamin A can be gained from foods like liver or leafy vegetables, and you need it for good vision and to keep your skin and hair healthy. Then there's vitamin C, which you can get from fruit and vegetables, particularly citrus fruits like oranges, and you need this to prevent yourself from getting the disease scurvy. There's also vitamin D, which is a weird one in that your body can actually make it itself using sunlight, but you can also get it in foods like eggs and oily fish, and its main purpose is to help you absorb calcium. Calcium itself though is actually an example of a mineral ion and is found in dairy products like milk as well as leafy vegetables. You need calcium for strong bones and so if you don't eat enough calcium or you can't absorb it because you don't have enough vitamin D then it could lead to a condition like rickets where your bones can be deformed. Lastly we have iron which you get from red meat, spinach, and beans. Iron is a really important component of hemoglobin, which remember helps your red blood cells transport oxygen around the body. 
So if you don't get enough iron, you can develop a condition called anemia, where you can't transport as much oxygen to your tissues anymore. Alright, the last things we need to look at are fibre and water. Fibre is actually a type of carbohydrate, but we normally think of it separately because we don't absorb it into the body at all. It's found in wholemeal foods like wholemeal bread and brown rice, as well as in fruits and vegetables. And its role is to help food move through our intestines properly. So it basically stops us from getting either diarrhea or constipation. Meanwhile, water is just normal water, so we get it from our drinks and also from most foods. For example, oranges and strawberries are mostly water. We need water for loads of things in the body, including chemical reactions. But the main thing is that most of our body is made of water. In fact, we're about 70% water. And we're also continuously losing water by breathing, sweating and urinating. So we're constantly having to replace it all. Hey everyone, Amadeus here. I just wanted to let you know that we also have a learning platform where you can watch all of our videos, practice what you've learned with questions, and keep track of all of your progress for both the sciences and maths. It's completely free, so if you haven't already, you can check it out by clicking on our logo here on the right. Or if you'd like to do the lesson for this particular video, we put the link to that in the description down below. We've also arranged all of the videos for this subject in a playlist for you here. That's all though, so hope you enjoy, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.